if you want to be a better programmer, you really have to practice. And if you want to practice, then you're in luck because I've got a great video here for you today. We are going to be walking through a hacker rank practice Java program together and I'm very excited for this one because I haven't made a video like this before. But this is the Java currency formatter problem. Um, it's a rated easy, but I think this would be great practice for you to start using your programming skills and really nail that nail those ideas into your head. But first, if you're new here, my name is Alex. I make a Java tutorial on this channel every single week. So if you're new here and you might be interested in that, then please consider subscribing. So first, let's look at the problem statement. If you want to have this page up on your laptop, you can just search hacker rank Java currency formatter and it'll pop up for you. So this is what it looks like. It's pretty short. And let's just read through it together. Given a double precision number payment denoting an amount of money, use the number format classes get current instance method to convert payment into US, Indian, Chinese, and French currency formats. Then print the formatted values out as follows. And it should look like this. Where formatted payment is payment formatted according to the appropriate locales currency. So this is a really good example because it's so confusing that it really matches up with how college professors write problem statements for college students. Because no professor apparently knows how to write a simple problem statement. But seriously, it's, it's a big problem, like just the way these are written. If I was a freshman or sophomore trying to, trying to do this, like I would be lost out of my mind. But since you're watching this video, it won't be a problem for you because I'll I'll explain everything. Note, India does not have a built-in locale, so you must construct one where the language is English, okay? We have the input format here. It's a single double precision number denoting payment. Um, payment can only be between zero and 10 to the ninth. We have the output format here. We have a sample input and a sample output and a little explanation here. Each line contains the value payment formatted according to the four countries' respective currencies. Okay, here's a pro tip. If you're in college and you have something like this, really just focus on the problem statement first and go one section at a time in super small increments after you just get a general sense of kind of what the overall nature of the project is. So we kind of looked at everything, but let's really nail down the problem statement. Given a double precision number payment. Okay, so it's going to give us an input to our program and that input is going to be a variable named payment that is of type double. Okay, so we got a double named payment, okay. It is an amount of money, so we're gonna shoot a payment into our program and we're going to use the number format class, which I don't know what that is. We'll have to look up what that is together, but it sounds like it's just a class that has methods and attributes. All classes have methods and attributes that help you achieve a certain goal. And this one looks like it formats a number for us. So we don't have to implement it ourselves. We can just use this class. We're gonna use that class's get currency instance method. So we're just gonna make a number format object, do a dot, and then that'll bring up the method. And we're gonna use that method to convert the payment we shot in into US, Indian, Chinese, and French currency formats. And it sounds like we just have to read up on how to use the get currency instance method and able to do all this. And then it's just a matter of printing them out with the print statement and in the format they want. Where formatted payment, each one of these is the payment formatted. Okay, got it. Okay, so let's start, uh, let's start making this. Let's just make a new Java project together. We'll call it Java Currency Formatter. Finish. And we'll make a new class with the main method so we can run our code. We will call it currency formatter and add that main method in there. If we go back, I think they had some code in there for us to start down here. Yes, so the reason we're not using this like little IDE in the web browser is because you have to make a hacker rank account and you get like a month free, but then they try to sell stuff to you. So I don't want uh, you to have to go through that. So we're just gonna copy this code from the main method and put that into ours. Cause this is what they're giving us like a little template to start. 
And now you'll be like, well, what the heck? Why would they give us code that doesn't work? Well, since this looks like an object, we have to input that into our program. So just hover over scanner and click import scanner, java.util. That'll generate the import statement so that we can start using the scanner. And of course, you could just type this out yourself if you wanted to. We still have some red underlines here, but this is for this formatted values, it looks like. Um, but to me, I just kind of want to change these into just strings for now because I don't like having red underlines and I like to have a compiled program before I start. So we can run this and ah, it's getting the next double um, as an input it looks like. So we just type some payment number 1445, hit enter, and then we have all these beautiful print statements. So now let's go back to the problem statement a third time. This is exactly how you're gonna be solving um, problems like this. Is like looking at the problem statement, doing some code, looking at the problem statement, compiling, thinking, looking at the problem statement. <laughs> so given a double precision number payment, okay, well, it looks like it handled that payment um, saying double payment equals scanner.nextdouble, getting it from the console here. So that's done. That's already done for us. So that's great. Use the number format classes get currency instance method. Okay. These are links. So I'm assuming they want you to click this to look at more information about these classes and methods. And this brings up one of the scariest things in programming the documentation. I'm gonna show you how to read documentation because this is something they don't really teach you how to read. They just they just kind of send you these links and assume you know you know how to read all this coding documentation. And this is, ugh, I hate this. But we're gonna do it for you. It's for you. Number format class. Number format, okay. I'm just gonna read this a little bit. This class provides the interface for formatting and parsing numbers. So it looks like it just formats numbers. And it also provides methods for determining which locales have number formats and what their names are. So it looks like this is how you would like format a number. Um, this is how you would format multiple numbers. It gives you some code you can start from, but yeah. Okay, let's look at the get currency instance method now. This is the same page. It just shot us down straight to the get currency instance method inside the documentation of this number format class. So here is that first line of how they make the method. Get currency instance. We look at the first one, it's a capital, so that's an object. We have to pass in a locale object and it will return a currency format for the specified locale. And it just says what that parameter is in locale and it returns the, the number format instance for currency formatting. Okay, so what I would do here is just kind of start playing around with using that um, number format class. So we'll just type number format Let's just make one for right now so that we can start using it and import it. So hover over it and you should see import number format. This again, just like the scanner, will create a import statement so that we can start using it. This has red underlines because we're not using the constructor correctly, but we'll just delete that and see if we can just um, tack on a dot and see what the number format can do. So these are all the static methods and it looks like get currency instance. Is that the one we want? Let's see, get currency instance. Yeah, let's use that. Number format dot get currency instance. Okay, we were able to do this because it's a static method. For static methods, you can just type the name of the object, do a dot and you can access the methods that way. For non-static methods like this scanner, you have to make the scanner object and then do that variable dot get method. So now I remember get currency instance, we had to pass in to these parentheses a parameter and that parameter was a locale, this locale thing. So we gotta figure out what that is. And that might be in the documentation. So I'm just gonna control F for locale and see if we have anything. Oh, okay, good. Good, 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 look at this, look at this. To format a number for a different locale, specify it in the call to get instance. Okay, 
So we might have to do number format dot get instance locale this, but I think ours was get currency instance. So yeah, this might work, but it looks like this is a locale, just like this, locale dot. So maybe we create a locale object by doing locale dot. Yeah, okay, so let's try that. And the first one was US, so we'll do locale dot O. Oh, and look at this, look at this, boys and girls. We've got all these, what looks like different countries here. So the first one is US. I'll click US, that's UK, US. And it looks like we're on the right, right path. By the way, this is how, like this, um, the way I'm doing things is exactly how I would try to solve problems in my um, computer science classes when I was in college and high school. And this is just the way I do it. I don't know um, if other people do it differently, but hopefully this kind of sheds light into um, how I do it and what works for me. So I'm going to see if we can print this out. I don't know what this will do. So first we have to pass in a double. And so when we print out the number format dot get currency instance, it prints out this weird stuff. But let's see what the number format can do by doing a dot after this. It looks like this has methods to format doubles. Yes, that's what we want to do. We want to format the double we passed in. It looks like this will do that for us because it says format and um, pass in a double. And as we click on it, we can see kind of um, a description of what it does. It specializes a format, um, pass in a double, returns the format string, which is good because we want to print a string. And yeah, let's try that. Number format, get the currency instance of US locale, and then format the number we pass in, which is a payment, which is a double, so this will work. And I'm going to zoom out a little here so you can kind of see everything. We're going to see what that does. Oh boy, let's go. We got 1550 here with a dollar sign. That's good. That's, that's really good. Okay. So we're just going to throw this inside of that US print statement so we can get that out of the way. Actually, let's let's create strings. Let's str say string US because this is kind of how they had it. String US equals this and then print out US. My parentheses are off. I think, yeah, okay. So we'll pass in $111.90, and we got US $111.90. Let's do the same for India, China, and France. So let's see if we can do this. India, China, France, locale.china, locale.france, oh probably different or in all caps locale.china locale.france and I'll walk through all this again so you know exactly what's going on and then locale.india and it doesn't have India which makes me think that back in the problem statement it said something about India ah India does not have a built-in locale so, and by built-in locale, it means it's not like US, China, or France where they were built in. It doesn't have the built-in India one. So, you must construct one where the language is English. Okay, there's a link here, so that might have a hint. So we need to construct a locale. And to do that, you type new locale. And it looks like this is the constructor because it's just the name of the class. And this constructor has two parameters. Okay, so we gotta use this. So I'm just gonna put in a new locale here. 
because we got to use that constructor. And then pass in two parameters. Now, what are those two parameters? A string language and a string country. The language parameter is some code thing, language code, or language sub tag. See the locale class description about valid language codes. And then country, see locale class description about valid country codes. Okay, so there's going to be a list of languages and a list of countries, and we just got to find India, or pass English in, I think. So we got to look up the language locale class description. Looks like examples are this. So I looked around for a few minutes and I can't find it. But this um, is a good time to use Google. Search for like India, the code is. So I looked around and I think I found it. The string um, language is English and then the country I think IN is India. So we're just going to save and run that and see what happens. Pass in 123, 23. And since we're not using those variables, we have to add in those variables. OK. 145, 34. And we've got the. RS showing up, the little the yen sign, I think, and then the euros, I think. And these are all the formatted ones, which is great. So that's the solution. So let's look at the everything else so far. Make sure we got everything. We did a problem statement. Um, India doesn't have a built-in locale, so we constructed one. Input format is double the payments between 0 and 10 to the 9th. In the first line, we print US payment, India payment, China payment, France payment, which we have. Let's throw in this sample input and see if we get the same thing. Let's compare. And yes, it is exactly the same. So this is the solution. Let's go through what we did. We read the problem statement a bunch of times. We copied this kind of outline code from the problem statement that they gave us. And then we started to write our own code here. We used the number format class, looked in the documentation, found a method, figured out how to use this method. We needed to pass in a locale object. And we kind of experimented, did locale dot, and found that um, all these different countries came up, which was also set in the documentation. And this returned, this method returned a currency format. And so we found that the currency format has a format method, which we can pass a double in, which is our payment. So we did, we did that for US, China, and France, and it worked. And then we found out for India, we actually have to create our own. So we just used this constructor, new locale, and then constructed it with two parameters that it needed, the uh, language and the country. And I scrambled to find EN and IN on the internet and in the documentation, and it turned out to be India. So a little bit of guesswork a lot of scavenging documentation just to figure out how this worked. And this is how really I approach these things, how I did it for all my eight years of programming. Hopefully you seeing me do this for you and walk through it um, has helped you practice Java. And yeah, I encourage you to practice more on any website. There's a bunch of different Java coding websites. Um, let me know if you liked this kind of format where I walk you through like a real project a challenge. I found all the solutions on GitHub for this and a bunch of other um, hacker rank solutions. So to make sure this is um, their solution, there are other ways you could do this, like it doesn't have to be the exact format, um, but this is one solution I found and I thought would be good to walk through with you. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.